What's up, everybody? Wilson XCI, and we're back at Watkins Glen with the OOR North American Rookie Series League race. And you're watching my fastest lap in the qualifying session. So we're going to dig right into that. So we're going to carry our speed to the first turn pretty well. We're going to go flat through the S here. And I took this wide, and I think I got distracted by something. I forget if it was Discord or... I don't know. But I took it wide. Didn't seem to cost me too much. But we're going to break out the 300 board. Try to carry our speed through the inner loop here. And we're going to want to continue to carry our speed around this turn, this long turn. Sometimes getting down into gear three when we need to get a little more rotation. But storm drain to the right, we're going to brake right as we hit that. Ease off the brake, get on the pedal as early as possible to come up for this next bank turn. Right at the 100 board, or right before it, we're going to hit the brakes and ease off them. Try to carry our speed again. And the next turn we're going to come up to is... Pretty sharp turn, just past the 200. Get on the throttle early, lots of runoff on the left side. And we're gonna wanna get, just after that AWS sign on the right, the last one, we're gonna break there. Do our best to carry speed, get on the throttle early. And then, second to last turn. If you hit it just right, you can get a lot of time, as you can see on the top left screen there. And a little bit of time here as well. Pretty much gained about a quarter of a second off those last two turns. And we're good enough for a 145, which puts us on the pole currently. As we head back to the pits. Up by eight tenths of a second. But as qualifying closes, you can see that the McLaren, number 47, he beats me by... Two and a half tenths. So really excited to be back at this track. I think this really is one of the best tracks in the game. It was a really welcome addition. But more importantly today, I want to talk about folks who are of my skill level and even lower. Because there are a couple times in this race where experience shows. Despite kind of being a standout driver in this race. Beginning of this race and at the very end, that, that lack of experience kind of rears its ugly head. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. But it's something that with time, we'll improve on. They're off and away and I get a pretty poor start and immediately getting sucked back into the field. We're gonna go three wide into turn one and I kind of freeze up here, try not to hit anybody. I bounce off the Audi on the inside, hit the McLaren on the outside and luckily he recovers, but not really how I want to start my race affecting someone else like that. Complete accident, but as you can see in turn one here on the replay, lots of mayhem behind me and that is the power of having a good qualifying spot is avoiding all that. But said sorry to Lewis there. He took it well. Race wasn't over for him. But as you can see in the cam, <laughs> that McLaren, oh my goodness. That McLaren, a full send into the Shadow Realm there. He hit that wall really, really hard. If you didn't see it, I recommend rewinding that video. That was that was a that was a heavy hit into the wall. That's that's a, a race ending incident unfortunately for him anyhow we're uh only a second behind after a little bit of a rocky start here but i know i have the pace to keep up with these guys so at this point we're just going to try to pull away from the pack spread out get comfortable in our cars and, you know, it's it's hopefully some good racing. Now, one thing I do notice is 
The group behind us is definitely trailing, but the more we fight, it looks like the BMW may be able to keep up with us. But kind of a kind of a big change up here with the starting order. Krochik was the the leader of this race, at least at the start. I moved down to third. Third place moves up to first. First place moves down to second. So a little bit of a change of route going through turn one and all that that mayhem. But going back to that turn one incident. Nine. If you're wondering why I don't have a penalty yet, because these are these are races that are have live stewards so they are actively handing out penalties now you'll, you'll see a penalty later and Copy nine essentially the way that it was worded after the race when I talked to them was and I'm and I'm in complete agreement with this is it really starts with turning in a little bit early on the Audi and kind of bouncing off of him into the McLaren and if it wasn't for the a little bit too much of a turn in and squeezing him there, and say I just kind of brushed the McLaren on the outside instead, just that, they said probably wouldn't have gotten the penalty just because the outside move that made it three wide was pretty aggressive and you basically, when you pull moves like that, it kind of just turns in more into a, a racing incident because it is a high risk movement. But as you can see, we're running 147s and tires are kind of just getting up, just getting warmed up here. And we are running with higher fuel loads, so as the race goes on, the, the track times should continue to go down. But luckily, we're all kind of running in the low 147s right now, which which is good for myself and the McLaren in front of me. As long as we're staying with the leader, we've all got a pretty decent shot of winning this one. But as you can see, the BMW behind, managing to stay with us, and obviously in the back of my mind, may have to defend 47. if we kind of get bunched up together. Sorry, 48. So as we're driving around, you can kind of already see there's a lot of cars in the pits already. So definitely a lot of, a lot of things going on. You can see the hear the stewards here and there, referring to track incidents. And now it looks like the BMW behind is pretty much right with us, so hopefully we make a good push here with the McLaren. It's going to be one of those situations now where we're, we're really going to need to get by him so that the leader doesn't get, get away. But we're going to fast forward to lap 5 now. Come down into turn 1, and it looks like the McLaren loses an edge there. He might have taken the curb a little too sharp, but that's a free spot for us. Unfortunate event for him. He was the driver on pole at the start of this race. But the Audi gets ahead a little bit. 2.2 second lead, but we're pulling away, as you can see, as, as we skip forward from pretty much everyone else. So it's going to be uh, me and him most of this race, but... You can see now there is a five second penalty. So at this point in my mind, we're going to have to nail this pit stop. We're going to have to get the entry right. We're going to have to fit into the box just right so that there isn't extra time being wasted in moving the car. But we're going to fast forward because I basically, basically was trailing him for a while, but we did close in a lot. We're less than a second now. We were a little over two seconds uh, a number of laps ago. But as I mentioned, we, we skipped quite 
quite a bit ahead. We're already on lap 14 now. A good portion of the way through the race. Very clean. Not much going on. But the good thing is, is that we have the pace. We have the pace to win this race. The question is, is can we make it work with a five second penalty? Ideally, kind of what I'm thinking is let's, let's get out really far ahead. We've clearly got the pace to do that. And let's, let's do so, so that when we get back on the track, we're not fighting through traffic. And I think that's really crucial if I want to have any chance with a five second penalty on the leader here. But we go in a little deep here. Loses a little bit of time as we fall uh, outside of a second here. But just to be clear, uh, we will be serving this five second penalty in the pits. Coming around here, you see that one of the boards is missing on the right, probably f obviously from an incident early, earlier. So it kind of throws you off a little bit when you're using that as a break point. Though so going to have to kind of hot fix that in a way, just kind of figure it out. But looks like the Audi is going into the pit. So we got a little cam there in the corner just to keep an eye on him as we go down the track. And ideally at this point, now that we do have the lead, we're going to want to do hopefully a really good lap to gain some time, time on him. And as I mentioned before, it's, it's, while he's in the pits, we want to run some good, a good lap. And when we come into the pits, we're going to want to get our entry just right. We're going to want to get our exit right. And we're going to want to be, make sure that we park in the box that we're given for the pit stop just fine. And if he does manage to mess up, that'll help us out a lot. But kind of hard to see in the online lobbies when, you, when you're looking at that, that secondary screen in the corner. You don't actually, I don't, there's really not a lot of animation going on in online races. Usually you see a pit crew running around and whatnot, but uh, not the case. So kind of hard to gauge just by looking at it if he's having a good pit stop or not. But he looks like he kind of like stalls there for a little bit or something. That might have cost him about a second, but he's off and away. And at this point, I'm deciding, I think, you know, right now, let's, let's go into the pits. Let's get this done. And number nine, actually, I'm, yep, yeah, number nine. Inside of the wall, he was the one that I actually spun out earlier, unfortunately, but he is managing to hover just outside the top five. So managing that race, okay. But we're gonna get down to speed, and I think we got the entry pretty good. And as we're in the pits, we're gonna get the camera back on the Audi and see how his lap is going. So we got the good pit entry. As you can see, there's going to be this little red box up here. We're going to want to brake just right so that when we turn the engine off, the car doesn't spend any extra time getting moved. For those that race this game, they'll understand. But the pit stop is starting, and it's going to be 36 seconds. Maybe there was a little damage. From when I tapped in the beginning, I don't know, but not enough to cost me a ton of time. It's really just going to be that penalty. It looks like the Audi on the top right screen there gets a little bit caught up with the Mercedes there. So anything that slows him down is exactly what we need, but he's coming through on the final turn here as he enters the straight. He's going to come across the finish line. I'm free in the pits. Get an okay exit, but he is by, as you can see now. Question is, is how much of a lead is he going to have? And it's going to be 2.2, but it's going to keep raising as he got, obviously he's carrying more speed 
up through this straight. So it's going to continue to increase until we hit that inner loop. And he may actually end up getting more time on us as well. Just over this next lap, just due to the fact that his tires are going to be a little bit more warmed up than myself. But having that five second penalty and being only 2.7, 2.8 seconds behind, pretty happy with that. We're, we're well within range of catching up to him and hopefully winning this race. But we're just going to have to get that pace going and... and we're going to want to get consistent mid 146s to one, to low 146s. And if we can just string string those along, we're in for an exciting end. Another thing to think about is back markers in this race. We're going to get into that territory as the race goes on. There is only a little under 14 minutes left, but there is enough time to catch some of these back markers and who knows what can happen there. But as you can already see, making our way through one back marker already. And first test here, getting through these back markers. We're going to get around the McLaren just fine. But we're really going to want to get through these cleanly. Every, every little bit of time that we're behind these cars is, is more time lost. On, but we, we get there through. We The first test, we, we get through just fine, clean. We managed to keep the, the same amount of pace. But we're going to cut to lap 19 as we cross the line for lap 20 here. And there's uh, only about eight minutes left. We want a 146.4, but... We did fall behind a little bit at three seconds, so at this point, there's only going to be about five five laps left, and you know it's really time to drive the hell out of the car at this point if you're going to make any push to to win this Nine, race. Two separate drivers. But Audi's run a, a great race; he's been very consistent. So we're going to have to pull something out of our hat here. But as you can see on the track map, there is a lot of lap traffic ahead, and this could play a big part in the end of this race, and, and that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Now, these this, the, again, the back marker rules in this league aren't exactly what you typically see in GT3. Uh, we go by F, F1 rules, which basically is you need to get off of the racing line and let the driver pass within four corners. But we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to drive the hell out of this car to catch him. Again, that that board on the right is missing, and a number of the laps I felt like I was making some time on him, and I, I don't know if he's thrown off as well by that board. He might be using that as a marker. But just this past lap, we've ran a very good lap. We're already catching him. And we're going to run a 145.8, which is the fastest lap of the race at this moment in time. And if there's anything that I need, it's a good confidence boost. And hopefully, if he's looking down at his, his HUD there and sees that that's the fastest lap of the race or sees that, you know, I ran a lap that much quicker, you know, hopefully, hopefully that puts the pressure on him. But... Seeing that lap come in, I know that I've got the pace to get this done, have the confidence to, to catch him. So we're going to keep pushing here as there are, are only about four laps left in this race. So can we do it? We'll see. As I mentioned, lap traffic ahead, that could very well slow him down. Get a little loose in that corner, so lost a little bit of traction, but he might have lost some as well. We caught him by uh, 
three or four tenths just on that turn alone. Still catching him a little bit, but we're, we're closing the gap. What was once three seconds is now 2.2. And I don't know if it was pressure kind of coming towards the end here that's getting to him. Nine. But I did spend a lot of time with uh, lower fuel levels in practice. And maybe this is where I'm my quickest. Obviously, you're going to be faster with lighter fuel loads, but I just feel like maybe there's something with me and handling this car at that fuel load that's also better. But again, we're, we're, we've almost half the time at this point. He runs a 147.06 while I run another 145. So lots of time gain there. And we're in a bit of a flow state here. But back-to-back -back 145s is exactly what I need. And as that number keeps disappearing, I'm sure he's looking at it. Hopefully the pressure gets to him. He definitely takes that chicane better. You can see he, he, he gains a decent amount of time there. But I think for the most part on the rest of the track, I generally do a little bit better. So maybe something to go back to. I do think just before the 200 is the actual proper braking point, but I tend to do it right after the 300. So not a huge difference, but enough to make it a decent gap in time there. But he looks like he gets a little loose there. There's also McLaren spun out. Luckily, luckily out of harm's way. But he did lose a little traction there coming out of that turn, so we're going to gain a couple more tenths of a second. And slowly but surely, we're, we're really reeling in here. Again, that board's just gone. And just trying to find uh, something to be a good marker of the breaking point. So we go in a little deep there. Lose a little bit of time. Luckily, not too much. But the lap traffic has arrived. As you can see right ahead of them. So the question right now is, is we're running a faster race, but how well or can we do a better job at getting through the lap traffic than him? And as you can see, we run another uh, lap just, just, just past the 145s. So we do pretty much almost a 146 flat, which is another lap that's better than first place. So really stringing together some valuable, valuable laps right at the best time. Get through the first car, all right. We're going to go through the chicane. Always a scary area with back markers. But he carries him all, himself well through there. And we got to make sure that we get by him. As the leader right now has gained a couple tenths, a few tenths of a second on me. But we're going to... He's going to graciously move aside to let me through. And... Unfortunately, it did cost us a little bit of time, but again, we're running we're running a good race. We can get a good stretch without having to go through some back markers. Or if he gets caught, you know, we're we're on track. And again, kind of inconsistent here. It took the turn okay, but You'll see in the last few laps, or if you've noticed in the last few laps, the breaking point hasn't been exactly the same. So missing that board is uh, definitely throwing me off a little bit, but I, I do think it is throwing off first place as well. First place comes across with a 146.5. I come across with a 146.5. Him slightly faster, but I think that just really has had to do with the lap traffic. But as you can see, we've got under a minute left in the race, which means this is going to be the second to last lap. And we are now only one second off the leader. Get a little bit wide towards the end of that turn there. Doesn't cost us too much, thankfully. 
But it did look like the Audi went a little deep there. Doesn't seem like we're going to gain much time, but those back markers are a huge factor. Let's see what happens here. Audi goes wide again. And I, I'm sorry, I realize this, this is the last lap. This is the last lap. Audi makes a big mistake there. I think the pressure could be getting to him here. But we're right behind him now. As we come up to the third last turn. And he's he's going to make a mistake. And we're going to get a run on him. We're going to get a run on him. We're going to do a drag race to the second to last turn. Let's see if we can carry a speed through here. <laughs> and that just wasn't good. That wasn't a good job by me. Fortunately, I'm not going to get first place here, and it's really my own fault. But we get second, finish right behind the leader here, and that experience thing I was talking about, that's... I was uncomfortable racing him side by side through that turn and felt like I had to slow down more. I felt cramped, and yeah, I mean, that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. But with more time, we'll get more experience. We'll do better. Second place is nice. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed that race. We're going to be back next week at Barcelona. I'll see you then. Peace.